All right. So, back to this. Bobby said, let's find the coordinates of these points. So there's one, three, negative one, two, three, four, five, negative three. So negative five, negative three there. Okay? All right, we found the coordinates. That one. I can't remember the formula. There is a formula, right. And will you have to memorize that formula? The answer is no, you won't. Okay, so I have um, a class set of formula sheets here, and I'll try and get you guys your own copy too, just so you can you know refer to it. Um, but uh, on these new uh, formula sheets for the MCAP, which is the new part, all right, on the back here, you will see there is the slope formula. Okay, so these MCAP formula sheets are much more generous than those part formula sheets you guys might be used to. So subtract the y coordinates. Divided by, subtract the x coordinates, right? The change in the y divided by the change in the x. Okay? So we'll just go ahead and use the 3 here. Minus the negative 3 right there over the x coordinate minus the other x coordinate there. Okay? And of course, I use the letter M here because M is the variable that we typically use in math, right, to talk about slope. Right? M for slope. Why M? I really don't know. Well, so is it Y's on top or X's on top? The Y's are on top, X's on the bottom. Think about this, right? So uh, I'll come back to that. But yes, it's the Y's on the top. And then I'll explain a little bit to help you remember that. So 3, take away negative 3. Well, when you subtract a negative, what's that the same as doing? Adding a positive, right? So we'll add the opposite there. And same thing here, subtracting a negative, same thing as adding, an, adding a positive. So it's 3 plus 3, which is 6. 1 plus 5, which is 6. Okay. Can we leave our numbers like this? No. You could if you want to. Number. But what's that, sorry? It's a whole number. Yeah, we can, we can simplify. Let's simplify. Okay. So you could describe that's our slope. But it's, it's helpful to simplify here. Okay. And yeah, we can divide 6 by 6 and we'll get 1. Or if you like, we can also write 1 over 1. And in fact, since we're talking about a slope, I would really encourage you to leave it as the fraction 1 over 1, right? Because a slope has two parts to it, a rise and a run, right? So by the way, instead of using the slope formula here, how else could we have done, how else could we have found the slope here? Besides like calculating using the formula, what else could we have done here? Pat? Um, counted yeah. the number of square up until like it yeah, from point to point, right? So we can, we can go from this point to this point, or we can go from this point to this point, okay? It's rise over run. So another thing for slope, right? Another way to remember slope is rise over run. And Bobby, that's what I was going to get to here. Rise describes the y coordinates. So that would be why your y's are on top. Run is your x's, so that's why they're on the bottom. So from here to here, we're just going to rise. One, two, three, four, five, six, and run. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there you go, six over six. Why can't you just follow the line? Like, why can't you just go one by one? It oh, like, like up one, one by one, one, up one by one? one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can do that, too. That's fine. That's that fine. That would get you immediately a simple one. Yeah, exactly. So you can just look here, too, and see. You know, so these two points are identified for us, right? And that's sometimes we have to be a little bit careful about because sometimes the lines, we're not sure. Do they hit the grid point? Do they not hit that grid point? So using the two points that are identified, we know for sure those are points that are on the line. But Bobby, your eyes don't deceive you here, right? And you can see pretty clearly, yeah, it's counting up one right. So you can use that too. Just be careful. Just be careful. Okay. So you got up six, right six. But wait a minute, we can also go from here to here. If I go from this point to this point, here to here, right? How do I have to move to go from here to here? I have to go down six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then which direction now? To the left, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So that would be down six is negative six, right? It's a negative direction. Left six is a negative six as well. Is that the same thing as this? Are these the same? That's what I'm asking. Don't they equal the same thing? Are they the same? Well, what's a negative divided by a negative? A positive. Positive, right? Yeah. So are these the same? Yeah. They yes. Are. yes, they are the same. Okay. These are the same. All right. So, so it doesn't matter which direction you count your slope, from here to here or from here to here. Okay, it just might simplify a little bit differently, but it will still be the same answer in the end. Okay. So why don't you guys go ahead and try number two?
Okay, try number two. Give it a go. Okay. I just talked that one to death, so you guys try one now. Whichever method you prefer, that's fine. There will be times where I will encourage you to do a particular method, you know, kind of thing, or at least give you strategies about when a particular method is fine here. In my opinion, probably counting is the best one to do because it's just there it is. Yeah. Most efficient. For this, that's fine too. I don't feel like you gotta like, you know. Um, but I also appreciate the effort for that too. <clears throat> Is that incorrect? Is that what you're drawing over top? Yeah. Okay, you're gonna fix it. Then. Well, no, I did fix it. Oh, okay. I put that to the one into the wire over Gotcha. Um, in an effort to um, not play favorites and stuff like that, I have my uh, graphing calculator um, pick a random number. All right. Um, you guys are all numbered here on my, my clipboard up so here, so that's why I look at this. All right. So, um, and I just pick a random number and then that's associated with your name and I call. Okay, remember that if I call on you and you're like really uncertain or you don't want to say it, you can say, you know, pass, that's fine. Um, Later on, I might start to press you on that a little bit, but for right now, I'll be okay with it. Okay, so let's go actually to Luke. Luke P. What did you get? Because uh, I think let's see, because we have yeah, we have two Lukes. All right, so Luke P. Yeah. All right, um, what did you get, Luke? Um, I'm not sure if this is right, but I got n equals one over one because I started with the points. I got zero negative one. Okay, zero negative one is one of the points. And what was the other point you got? Uh, the other point was negative two, negative. Four. Negative two, negative four is another point there. That is correct. Okay, very good. Okay, and what did you do from that point then? You used slope formula. Yep. Okay, so what? Did, how did you set it up? What did you write? Um, I wrote m equals negative four minus negative one. Okay. Over. Um, it's over negative so two. You, okay, negative two minus zero, minus zero like that. Okay, hey, perfect. All right, now let's just do that math. So um, negative four, take away a negative one, that's like adding a positive one, right? So that'd be negative three. So it'd be negative three, and then negative two, take away zero. Is negative two. Negative two. And then we have a negative, so, so we could st say there and say that's our slope, that's okay to write that way, but because it's a negative divided by a negative, let's go ahead and make a positive three halves there too. That's also acceptable, so four. Okay, so great, see, there you go, Luke. Okay, that wasn't too bad, right? Not very painful. Right. Okay. So I took algebra 1.5 last spring, too. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, that's that is. So three halves is our answer there. Also, you could have counted, right, from this point to this point. Rise of three, run of two. Up three, right two, right? Or down three, rise, left two, run. So negative three, negative two. Sorry, Hello. Yes, can do. Thanks. Mm -hmm. No problem. Okay, so yeah, three halves. Questions on that? All right. <laughs> Question, Bobby. Do we have Bless. work beside something we have a student? 
Um, I'm going to maybe assign you some from here, too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Let's keep it rolling here, though. So, number three. All right. I'm going to, I mean, again, it's just find the slope of the line through each pair of points. So that's, again, using the slope formula, right? So, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. <coughs> okay. So obviously, when it comes to a line, writing the slope of that line, coming up with the slope of the line is um, super important. It's like a very you know, important um, characteristic of the line. Okay. But there's our slope formula there. All right. Let me show you something here, though, too. Okay. You see how I labeled my points there? I labeled them wrong. Right. Mr. Wynn, that's the first point, that's the second point. Shouldn't this be x1, y1, and this be x2, y2? Why did you do this? Because the purpose and point, my point here I'm trying to show you is that this point, does, you could call that the first point if you want to, and this is the second point, right? The order of these two points doesn't matter, okay? The slope from here to here is the same as the slope from here to here, and I'll show you that, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and just do this slope here. It still works out what the way it's supposed to, so two minus seven over, um, 10 minus negative 9. So 2 minus 7 is negative 5. 10 minus negative 9, well, that's really then positive 19. Okay? <clears throat> if I did it the other way, you know, just to show you here, you don't have to write all this stuff down if you don't want to. If you, you have to write at equals? You don't have to. I, whoops. Hang on a second. I do it just so that way there's a label for it, you know, so we can kind of know what we're calculating. So 7 take away 2, positive 5, negative 9 minus 10, negative 19. Okay. These two slopes are the same. Right? Negative 5 over positive 19 is the exact same value as positive 5 over negative 19. Okay? So in other words, when you have a negative fraction, that negative can kind of jump up or down from the numerator to number. It's still the same thing, right? All the things change that it's negative to me. Still the same value. Okay? Those are equal. Equal. Alright. Still finding slope. Oh my gosh, more slope problems. Can anyone tell me what's the slope? According to this. So this is a linear equation, right? It's a linear equation. Um, maybe we'll require you to answer that. Does anyone know how we can tell this is a linear equation? What about this allows us to know this is a linear equation? The equation or its graph will be a line, right? What about this, Tyler? I don't know if you're looking for the x plus 2 and 2 graph we talked about or go through. Yeah, it would make a line, right? Okay, make a line. Yeah, exactly right. Okay. You, you guys remember, this is in a particular kind of form. Y equals mx plus b. Yes, y equals mx plus b, also known as blank blank form. Slope intercept form, exactly right. Okay, this is a very specific, special form for the equation of a line. There are other ways to write the equations of a line, okay, but this is the slope intercept form. It's super helpful because it gives us the slope and the intercept, specifically the y intercept of the line. Okay, you got the y intercept, it's where the line crosses the what? Anybody? Y axis, Y axis, Y axis. It's called the Y intercept. Okay. And yeah, like Bobby said, we sometimes refer to this as Y equals MX plus B. And that's why I've been using the M here to make you guys associate, oh yeah, the number in front of the X there, it's a 3. So the slope is just, like literally, it's just a 3. No math needs to be done except for the analysis. You look at it, you're like, oh, slope intercept a form, 3 is our slope. Also, this is a linear, another way to show it's a linear equation is that x has what as its exponent? What exponent could I, could I put in here for x to the 1? Okay. So when you have just x to the 1 in an equation like this, okay, that indicates you have a linear equation, x to the first power. Okay. Yes, go ahead. All right. Next here, find the slope of a line parallel to each given line. Okay. Parallel. Parallel. 
All right, so let's go to, let's see here. So, Matthew, I think you're the only Matthew in here. Yeah. Matthew, um, what makes lines parallel? Do you remember? What, 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 like, what's parallel? What does that mean? Okay, they're next to each other. And sorry, go ahead. Hey, same slope. Same slope. Ooh, yes, perfect. So, if we want to find the slope of a line parallel to this one, what's the slope of this line, Matthew? What's the slope of this line? Negative two. Negative two, right? It's the m there in front of the x, right? Yeah. So there's our slope. Okay, there's our y-intercept there. So then the slope of a line parallel to this one will be what slope, Matthew? Negative three. You just said that parallel lines have to have the same oh, slope. Negative so negative, that's negative two. Yeah, yeah. It's like it can't be that easy, is it? Yes, it's that easy. It's that easy. It's just negative two. Okay, so good oh, question. I don't know when, because it's either one or one up or one down. Or if, right, because if we have a line, if we had another equation had the same slope and the same y-intercept, what would that mean about those two lines? So they're, the exact same. they're the exact same line, right? So they wouldn't be parallel. They would, in fact, they perfectly overlap each other. And like Matthew said, parallel lines really should never intersect, right? But if they're exactly the same line, well, they're intersecting everywhere, right? Because they're completely overlapping. Okay. One more parallel concept we want to make sure we have down. Sorry, not parallel. One more slope concept we want to make sure we have down. Perpendicular. Okay, now this is going to have to make you remember back to geometry a little bit. You guys talk about this in algebra one as well. But, um, let's go to someone else. Thank you, Matthew, for your help there. All right, let's go to Christian. Remember what perpendicular means? Uh, no. no? Okay, so I'll, I'll help you out a little bit here. We'll just see. We'll just you know play around with the idea a little bit. Perpendicular. So the lines are going to intersect, and the angle that they form is going to be a very certain, a very specific angle that the two lines are. Ninety degrees. Yeah, the right, the right angle is what they make. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so um, they intersect to form a right angle, right? Now, we want to find the slope of a line perpendicular to this line. Okay. So, yeah, do you guys remember what do we have to So, first of all, what's the slope of this line, anybody? Negative one half. Negative one half. So, there's our slope right there. Okay. But do you guys remember what do we have to do to this slope to get a perpendicular slope? What's that? Changing. No, you don't have to change the slope. No, we're just worried about the slope for right now. We just need the slope to change. Let's see awesome. here. Let's go to Shane. Do you remember what we have to do to get a perpendicular slope? No? Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's see here. Sailor, do you remember what we have to do to get a perpendicular slope? No? Okay. I'll do a few more here. How about, let's see here. Okay. Uh, oh. Sometimes I like how it repeats things. How about Luke L? Well, you flip the fraction. Okay, so this would become what? Uh, be negative two over one. Okay. We do flip it, but there's one more step we have to do. If it's negative, we make it positive. Yes, yes. So the the words that we use for that are opposite. Okay, opposite for, you know, that's positive to negative or negative to positive. I'll put that in the parentheses there. Opposite. And then reciprocal, right? That's the other, like, fancy math term that we use there. And that's where you take your fraction, you kind of, like, flip the fraction like that. Okay, so this is our answer right here. Okay, trouble like that. <clears throat> okay, very good, Luke. So then, let's take a look at number 10, just to make sure we got that okay. So then five halves, uh, let's see here, let's go to Michael G. Five halves become what? We do the same thing as the last one. Yep, exactly right. So what would it become? Negative two over five. Yeah, negative two over five, you got it. That's our perpendicular slope. Okay. So there's the original slope right there, but then perpendicular to it would be negative two over five. Okay, easy peasy, right? Easy peasy. 
You might be like, this way, really slope. We're talking about slope. I just slope and out the one. I'm so done with slope. We get this stuff, okay? But I will say that this idea of slope shows up again and again throughout every unit, okay? But it's going to be hidden by the words that are used. Another way to talk about slope is to talk about the average. Sorry, I know you guys already flipped. I'm just going to write this here. Average rate of change, okay? This is a classic question that you will be asked over and over again in every single unit. Average rate of change is the same thing as the slope. Okay? So that's why I'm going bothering taking this time to go over with you, go over with this you now. Going over this with you now. Okay? Um, it's because you're going to see slope again and again and again, every single unit. There's always going to be some average rate of change question. Okay, just trying to help you guys prepare yourselves, you know, mentally for what to look out for here. Okay, on this mathematical adventure that we're going to have. All right, turn the page. Question. All right, now we're going to graph some lines. Okay. <clears throat> Let's hold off on number eleven for right now. Let's jump down to number thirteen. Okay. So, is 13 in, bless you, is 13 in slope intercept form? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, so, 13 is in slope intercept form. Um, Michael M., can you identify what is the slope of this line? What's the M? Yeah, yeah, there's a, there's a 1 or as a fraction, 1 over 1 in front there. Very good. What's the y intercept here, Michael? So on our graph here, there's our y-intercept, there's our slope. So on our graph here, let's go ahead and plot that. Five on the y-axis, right, because it's a y-intercept. And we'll just use our slope to count to get more points. Okay. Should I start counting from the origin with my slope? Go up one, right one from the origin? Should I do this? No. Where should I start counting? At the y, the y intercept. That's a zero five. So I'm going to go up one, right one, because that's my rise and run. And I'll put a point. I can't go any further. I, and you can extend things if you want to. But instead of going up one, right one, what other direction could we go here? Down one and left. Yeah, one. down one, left one, down one, left one. There's a point. Down one, left one, down one, left one. I like to, you know, extend it all the way. Okay. Okay, so there, there is my, there's my graph. There's our graph. Please make sure you put arrows at the end of your line, right? Because that indicates it goes on forever. You want to show that. Okay, you want to show that. <coughs> okay. <coughs> um, if you like to draw, so again, side note here. If you like to draw neatly. You know, if it bothers you to like have that freehand, that straight line there, I have straight edges and things over there. If you want to just go grab one at some point, that's fine. I have rulers and I also have protractors with a straight edge on it, so you can feel free to use those. I also have dry erase boards over there and dry erase markers too. If at any point, you know, you want to, you know, use those to help you do some work. Um, typically I'll have paper for you too, but I mean, you know, if you want to use dry erase boards and markers, that's fine too. We'll use them at some point too, you know, in a more formal one something. Okay. Let's do one more here just to make sure we're good. Go ahead and try 14. 11. Try number 14, actually. We'll come back to 11. We'll do 11 together. But try 14 real quick. Make sure we're going here still. So identify the slope, identify the y-intercept, graph it. Slopes now, we just want to graph what we have. So that's our slope, one over four. 
So from that point, you want to count up one and then right four again. Just like that. Good job. Okay. Yeah, you can look here at pages. Sorry, let's go like that. Okay. 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 So be careful here. The slope is one over four, so the rise is one, the run is four. So that's your point like that. Yep, exactly. Okay. Okay, looking good. Awesome. Uh, yeah, number 14. We've got a little quick. I need to stop back. Okay, looking good. Awesome. Good. Sailor, yes. Good, good, good. Okay, I see lots of good things here. Good. 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 Just so, yeah, Looks good. All right, well done. All right. Woo! Nicely done. Nicely done. All right, so let's see here. Um, I'll, just get, I'll just do it for the second time. Why is that? Four. Yep. Slope. One over four. Okay. Watch it. Remember, it's rise over run. The most common mistake I saw were folks flipping these numbers around and stuff like that. Okay. We're just graphing this line. Okay. We only flip and do the opposite if we're trying to do perpendicular stuff. But that's there's no mention of perpendicular here. Just graph the line. So rise is one, run is four. So from our wires, I up one, right four. Down one, left four. Okay. And connect the dots. I can't really fit any more, so that's why I just did the three there. Okie dokie. <laughs> All right, I've got to keep rolling here because I want to make sure we get to do a few more kind of problems. All right, number 11. Let's hit this one real quick before I move on. Okay. Today is kind of a packed day with all the stuff that we're doing. I'm sorry, I know we're getting close to the end of class here, <laughs> but I do. I know I do try to give you time to work on homework and stuff like that at the end of class, but just with all the stuff, we didn't have time to go for it. So, y equals 3. Is that in slope intercept form? Is it just I mean, vertical? Is it just vertical? Is it just a vertical line? Okay. From 3. What, 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 why, why does that clue you in it's a vertical, or just a vertical line? Because there's no um, slope. No slope? Okay. Yeah, there is no slope, right? In this case, what number? Could we give it the slope value here? When you say no zero. slope, zero. Yeah, the slope is zero, right? Because I could write this if I wanted to. Isn't this equal to zero x plus three? Yes. Right? Because zero times anything will be zero, plus three will just be equal to three. So I could say zero x or plus three. Okay? What's zero as a fraction? How can I write zero as a fraction? Zero over one. Zero over one. Yeah. Not zero over zero. Okay, zero over zero is actually something completely different. It does not necessarily equal zero, right? It does not necessarily equal zero. Sometimes this actually has a value and stuff like that. It's like a weird concept, okay? If you want to like, you know, ponder something strange at night, you know, zero divided by zero. It's an interesting idea. So three, yeah, it does. It's, if, if you type in your calculator, you get an error. Yeah, exactly, zero, zero divided by zero. Zero divided by one, though, no problem gives us zero. So what's the rise here? The rise is zero. So we're not going to go up or down at all, but the run is one. So I'm going to go right one, right one, right one, right one, right one, right one, and then left one, right, like this. Okay. So, Nick, it wasn't a vertical line. It was a horizontal line. But I, I get it. Look, I, when, I, when I, I would get it mixed up all the time myself, too, because... You know, yeah, I get it. For a, horse, for a vertical line, instead of a y here, what we have? Uh, x. If we had x equals 3, it will be a vertical line that goes through that right there. Okay. Another way to think about this, okay, if, like, if that's strange to you to think about, like Mr. Wood, like slope intercept form from here, really, another way to think about it is just that you're trying to graph the line y equals 3. You want to just graph all the points that have a y coordinate of 3, right? You just want to graph everything that has y is 3. Well, where does y equal 3? Right here, right? But y is also 3 here, right? The y coordinate is still 3. The y coordinate is still 3. The y coordinate still is 3, 3, 3, 3, right? And it goes 3 this way, too. What's changing is the x coordinate, right? But the y coordinate is all 3 right here, so that's why I get that nice horizontal line. Likewise, with the vertical line, if you have, like, x equals, you know, a number, I'll just squeeze it in here. If you have, like, x equals 2, where does x equal 2? x equals 2 right here. 
but also here and here and here and here and here and here. All these coordinates have an x value too, right? And so that creates that vertical line. And one way to think about graphing a line is that it's just all the points that make that equation true. So that's our idea. There. All right. Turn the page once more here. Okay, and we'll 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 just quickly take a look at two of these here. Let's take a look at 17. Directions say to write the slope-intercept form of the equation of each line. So in other words, y equals mx plus b. Okay. To write an equation slope-intercept form, what two pieces of information do we need? It's called slope-intercept form. So what do we need? Slope and the y-intercept. Slope okay. Let's look right here at number 17. Okay. What is the y-intercept of this line? Zero, negative one. Yeah. So just we'll use the number negative one. Okay. So b equals negative 1. And what's our slope? Well, we can just count it, right? There's a point. There's a point. So down 1, right 1. Negative 1 over 1. Okay. So y equals negative 1 over 1x plus negative 1, if you like. Or you can just say minus 1 there, 2 is fine. Okay. There it is. Okay. We'll stop there. Let me give you guys your assignment here real quick. So what I'm going to have you do, turn back to the first page, please. OK, I'd like you to do numbers 4, 6, and 8. 4, 6, 8 on the front. Can I write that up here, too? 4, 6, 8 on the front. OK, page 1, I guess we'll call that. OK, and then page 2. Page two, number 12. You can circle this number 12 there. Okay. And then on page three, I will have you do 18, 19, and 21. Okay. That'll be your time. My apologies again for not getting you guys, you know, time to work on that in here in class, but it's okay. Please, um, again, take your textbooks with you. <coughs> and please dispose of your um, sticky notes too, please.